Hey there guys, sorry it's been a while since I've done a pickup video, but I really haven't picked up that many games. I've been spending my money on a few other video game related items, so games have been kind of taking a back seat, but I've still been picking stuff up. It's been mostly playing catch up, but let me get started. For the DS, I picked up Lunar Dragon Song, and I haven't really gotten around to playing too much of this, so I can't give you guys any impressions. The other DS game I bought was Hotel Dusk room 215 and this is a uh, text-based adventure game that has a really unique art style uh, the characters are all like um, sketch drawn and the, the sketches are always like shifting in real time so it's it's really unique and uh, very interesting alright guys so GameStop had a buy two get one free sale after Christmas and I went in there and picked up a few PSP games that I didn't have so let me show you guys what I got the first one I got was Loco Roco now I did have this when it first came out, but for some reason I don't have it now. I only have the second one, so I decided to pick the first one back up again. And um, I'm pretty sure anyone that has a PSP has played this, and if you haven't, it's a very interesting, unique game where you're actually tilting the world to make these little uh, Loco Roco little ball guys move around and form in bigger ones and hop around and stuff like that. Very unique, interesting game for the PSP. Definitely recommend that one. The next PSP game I picked up was Wipeout Pulse, and I had Wipeout Pure, so I thought, heck, might as well get this when it's on the cheap side. Just as good as Wipeout Pure, but a little better graphics, more tracks, more race vehicles, and all that good stuff. The next PSP title I picked up was Infected, and it is a zombie killing game for the PSP. Pretty cool, you don't have too many zombie games on uh, the go, and this is a good one to pick up. The next PSP game I picked up was R-Type Command, and this one is a shooter put out by Atlas. If you like shooting games, it's a really good portable shoot 'em up so look into this one. Okay, the next PSP game I got is one that I probably should have picked up uh, a while ago because I've been hearing so much good stuff about it, and that is Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. And I didn't even know this until I got home, that this is a more valuable version or something uh, because it's in black and silver on the front. And uh, apparently these go for a pretty penny on eBay compared to the regular. Uh, and I still paid the regular price. So that's pretty cool to get, I believe it's $40 on eBay for this version used. And I only paid 8 bucks at GameStop, so that's pretty cool. The next PSP game is one that I had a long time ago. And it is my favorite fighting game on the PlayStation Portable. And that is Darkstalker Chronicles The Chaos Tower. Awesome fighting game. Awesome character animations and sprites really get this if you're into fighting games or if you're a fan of Capcom games definitely look into this one. The next PSP game I got was Astonish a Story and I basically picked this one up on a whim because I really liked the uh, cover and the back art I thought the art just looked amazing picked it up on a whim and I've only played about half an hour to an hour of it so I can't give you too many impressions but I really like the battle system it's really fun and uh, the character sprites look really great. The next one is Patapom 2 which it is obviously the sequel to the first Patapom, which was a really unique music rhythm-based adventure game where uh, you control your, your group of uh, guys through button commands. The first one was a bit repetitive. This one still is kind of repetitive, but it's really good for a couple hours of quick fun. The next game I got was one I didn't think I was going to like at all, but I love this series a lot, and that is Rock Band Unplugged. I love the console versions, but when I first played this, my impressions were horrible because I played the career mode, and I don't think I was playing it right, but the way I played was I had to switch between all the instruments in the game, and it was just way too complicated. I would fail halfway through, so I put in practice mode, and I just played the songs through there, and it was so much more fun, and then you enter the cheat code, you got all the songs, you don't have to play the story mode, and it was just a blast playing it like that. So if you like rock band tracks and you like rhythm-based games, you really want to look into this. The next PSP game is one that I got when the system first came out, and that's Twisted Metal Head-On. And this is still one of the best racing games on the system, and it's just over-the-top fun. You can't ask for more from a Twisted Metal game. The last PSP game I picked up was Valkyria Profile Leneth, and I haven't gotten a chance to play this yet, but it looks so interesting. I just love that cover. And I believe this was a PS1 game, didn't get to play it back then, so I'm really looking forward to playing it now. 
and I believe the PS1 version is really expensive on eBay, so I'm glad I found this one at GameStop for cheap. Next is the PlayStation 3 game I got, and I only got one, sadly, and that was God of War 3. I can't believe I didn't get this when it first came out. Awesome game. Graphics are just amazing. By far the best graphics I've seen in a game probably ever. Really look into this. The combat is perfect. Santa Monica Studios just stuck with the formula. They knew that if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And that's what they did for this, and it's awesome. The draw distance, the character animations, the sense of scale, it's all phenomenal. You really need to play God of War 3. Even if you haven't played God of War 1 and 2, just go straight to this. It's so good. The boss battles in this game are just humongous. Like within the first 10 minutes of the game, you're fighting Poseidon, and he's like 30 stories high and stuff, and you're just this little Kratos character. Totally worth the, I believe it's 20 bucks now. Go get this. So good. I got two Wii games here, and the first one is Obscure the Aftermath. And I just finished beating Resident Evil 4 the day before I went to GameStop, and I saw this, and it looked really cool. It had a little Resident Evil vibe in there, so I basically just picked it up. Um, I still haven't gotten a chance to play it, but it looks like a fairly decent survival horror game. Um, I have never actually seen this before. It, when I saw it there, I just picked it up out of uh, pure whim. The other Wii game that I am in absolute love with is Dead Space Extraction. Since Dead Space 2 was about to come out, I saw this and I was like, oh, I gotta do it. I bought it, played it, absolutely loved it. Some of the best graphics I've seen on the Wii. Dead Space Extraction is probably my favorite on-rail shooter game I've ever played. Um, it outdoes House of the Dead for me, in my opinion. I find this to be better because this game actually has a fairly decent story for an on-rail shooter game. It really sets up the first Dead Space, so if you played this first, you really get an understanding of what's going on, what are all the necromorphs doing, why is um, why is everything gone crazy, and all that kind of stuff. This game really is a good introduction to the Dead Space universe. The next two games I picked up but haven't got a chance to play are Mass Effect and Mass Effect 2. I really want to start the first Mass Effect so my save character can transfer over, but I just need to find some time before I start these bad boys. The next game I got is one that I was super excited for and I'm so glad I picked this up and then imported all of my songs from the first two games. You guessed it, Rock Band 3. I picked this up with the keyboard bundle and let me say this is actually pretty fun. Um, I love playing the pro keys on a, I'd say medium, medium hard. It's a really fun interesting challenge. Um, the keyboards really do add like a new refreshness to the music genre. And I'm so glad that this isn't just another recan of a game. They actually want to think outside the box, add new stuff, make it innovative, and they've done that. This game's got lots of good tracks. Every single Rock Band game will import into here, except for the Beatles Rock Band. So if you got Lego Rock Band, Rock Band 1, 2, Country, Metal, Classic Pack, anything, they'll all import into here. You got them all on Rock Band 3. You never have to put those discs back in, and that is totally awesome. The next game I got is Call of Duty Black Ops. I bought the Prestige Edition with the uh, RC car. I couldn't get that RC car to work properly. I would turn it on and it would just go to the left. Uh, it wouldn't turn at all, so, so much for that. Let me start off with the single player. First of all, I love the single player. It's probably one of the best Call of Duty single players, if not the best single player. It wasn't too short, wasn't too long, wasn't too uh, over the top action. It was just right, really well paced absolutely loved it. Um, I actually like the idea of playing as mainly just one character so you really get attached to that person and the people around him. Okay, as for the Call of Duty Black Ops multiplayer, I know that's what everyone buys this game for and that's what I was mainly buying the game for too when I first picked it up. But after I played the multiplayer for a couple hours, I just found out that it's not for me. I really wanted to like it, I just couldn't do it. I'm more of a Call of Duty 4 slash World at War person. I'm not a fan of the custom kill streaks and uh, the co-op or the Call of Duty point system. I do like, however, the film editing system and the rewind like theater sort of thing. I think every game should have that incorporated, but I'm just not a fan of the way the multiplayer is paced. Uh, like I said, I'm more of a Call of Duty 4 and World at War player, and I still do play those games online very frequently, 
but Black Ops is just not as good as I hoped it would be. Next up is a couple Square Enix games. Uh, the first one, Infinite Undiscovery. I haven't got a chance to play this one yet, so I can't really give any impressions right now. Next one, Final Fantasy XIII. I really like the graphical style. Um, some people were hating on this game. I'm liking, but I'm not very far in, so I'm not going to give too many impressions. But so far, I'm pretty interested, and I really like the characters. Next up is Canon Lynch 2 Dog Days. And if you played the first Canon Lynch, you were either a love it or hate it person. I was a love it. And that meant that Canon Lynch 2 was definitely on my radar. But when I played the demo and saw that it was uh, camera based, like a film camera, that kind of turned me off from the game. But once I actually picked it up and I played it, I really enjoyed it. I'd really recommend this. If you love the first Canon Lynch, you got to play this. It's the same gameplay styles, but more of it and better. Controls are tighter. The graphics are better. Uh, it's like the only game I can think of that actually uses a video camera as like an overlay. So it does look like a documentary or a home footage kind of thing. Um, very interesting. I think this game has one of the most interesting multiplayer experiences out there. It's not like a normal shooter game where you, it's two teams up against each other and just fighting. You start off mainly all on one team and you go trying to get all the money you can and let's say one of your teammates uh, is acting a bit suspicious you can just kill your own teammate and then you can go grab his money but then once you do that everyone notices that you've betrayed a teammate and they can all take you out and it's just a lot of fun everyone trying to get the most money and then let's say you die from either like a, a computer-based enemy or a teammate kills you you come back as a police officer and then you try to kill the guys that are still alive getting all the money. It's really fun and unique. Really recommend it if you want to try some unique multiplayer experience. Next game I got was Street Fighter 4 and this is one of the best if not the best fighting game I've played on the 360. I'm pretty sure that Super Street Fighter 4 is better because it's the same thing but with more content. So I'm looking to pick that one up pretty soon but let me tell you that you probably are going to want to get a fight stick along with this because these games are just too hard to play with a regular controller. It's really hard to get combos and uh, finishing moves, not finishing moves, uh, ultra combos and whatever. You do probably want to pick up a fight stick when you're going to be getting a Street Fighter game or technically any fighting game because they are very complex and if you really want to be getting better it's really hard to get good using a standard controller. It's just the button layouts and the way the controller setup is not very optimal for the fighting game experience. So I'd recommend just finding a fairly decent fight stick um, and being able to play with that because you really will enjoy these games a lot more with a uh, fight stick. Next I got is Brutal Legends which is a uh, Tim Schafer double fighting game and it is a funny metal action game uh, it's, and RTS. So if that sounds interesting to you, you probably want to go look into getting this. It's not like any game you've really seen on the market and that's what Tim Schafer usually does. He usually makes pretty unique and interesting games but they usually don't sell very well like this one so you can get this one for pretty cheap. The last four I have here are sealed and they're, they're gonna remain sealed because I either have a copy of the game already or I picked them up on the cheap and I'll just keep them sealed. The first one is the Resident Evil 5 Collector's Edition. This one comes with a Chris Redfield figure, um, steel book, a messenger bag, a couple CDs and soundtracks and stuff like that. Pretty cool. The next one is Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger and this one just comes with an extra bonus disc with uh, some soundtracks on it and stuff like that. Really nice though. This one I got for pretty cheap right after the game came out on eBay was uh, Dead Rising 2 Sealed and this one comes with a uh, pen that looks like a needle, uh, interesting uh, tin case, an art book, a uh, band-aid that's got Zombrex on it and bonus discs and stuff like that. Really cool. Next I got is the Fable 3 Limited Collector's Edition and I'm gonna just keep this one sealed because I've already got the Fable 3 game to play. So for 40 bucks at Target, you can't beat that price, I'll just leave it sealed. So those are all the games I've bought in the past couple months. I just want to ask you guys a quick little question. What you guys think about the new statue videos I've been doing. I really enjoy filming those, editing them, and uh, just everything about the statues. I really enjoy that. I just want to see what you guys think, so leave a comment below which 
what's your opinion on my statue videos? If you like them, don't like them, want me to continue doing them, don't want me to do them anymore, let me know. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.